Usually, if I health talk, we've got a doctor in here, not this morning. We're talking to people this morning who have walked the walk. It's the second to last day in the month of October, and that's usually dubbed Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We've heard all the month-long campaigns against the serious condition, but how often do we actually hear the stories of survivors? Well, this morning, we've got two amazing women who have persevered, and we say a very good morning to them both. We've got Karen, and we also have Maria and we're hearing their stories this morning. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. You are looking morning. lovely in your pink. <laughs> and I noticed you're in pink as well. Yes. <laughs> and we are in pink we for tried. you. Yeah. Yeah. We are in pink for you and Wonderful. all the other survivors Thank and you. also this quest towards a cure. I want to start with your story. Okay. When do you discover, how did you discover that you were in fact, <laughs> um, that you had breast cancer? Quite by accident because I'm not somebody who normally went for mammograms or mm -hmm. did monthly examinations, self-examinations. And so I noticed quite by accident, you know, there was this lump one night and I said, hmm, that's strange. Ignored it for two weeks and it was still there. So I said, okay, time to go to my gynae. So he said, okay, it's probably not anything, but let's do some tests to make sure. So he sent me for a needle biopsy mm -hmm. and um, that confirmed that it was in fact breast cancer. When you sit and you have that conversation and he gives you that diagnosis, mm -hmm. what goes through your head? That goes through your head? <laughs> you're, you're paralyzed. You just moment. go into a row about a balling. That's the oh. first thing, really. Mm -hmm. you know? Some people might be in denial at first. Mm -hmm. No, I I've just went personally. straight into balling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Was that your experience, Mary? Well, actually, no, you know, I didn't cry. I didn't you cry. didn't cry. No, but was it an accident as well that you just found it yeah. right, right. I had, mine was in the duct. Mm -hmm. So when I looked at it, it kind of looked a little different. And I said, no man, this don't look right. But what happened? I, I lost a sister from this cancer, so. Oh, but, familiar. Right. And but, you didn't cry. I want to understand that part. Well, I just don't know. But it's like, I just, all right. When I called, <coughs> because after, the, after I did the biopsy and I called for the result and the doctor said, Mary, you call. I said, yes, I want to know something. OK, well, I just have to let you know, well, it's malignant. And I said, well, at first I, I sighed because I was beside. She could hear me sigh, right? Mm -hmm. right? And then I just said, OK, I just, just have to deal with it. I just have to deal with this. And how long ago was this? About wow. four years. Wow. Four years. And then you guys just go, went into treatment right away? Surgery and treatment, well, yes. Sir, right. Mm -hmm. So much of a woman's femininity. Yes people tied to their breasts. breasts. Yeah. Yeah. And the thought of the removal of one or both of those breasts must be something that that makes you it is scary. You process that? It is scary. Yeah. Well <laughs> Go on, Marie. it is well I don't know, maybe because I saw my sister's breasts, I looked at it. I don't know exactly what to expect and mm -hmm. everything. So I just it doesn't it didn't it didn't matter to me. It didn't mm -hmm. matter to me. And I had a friend, a very good friend, and he's my son's father. And I, I think he was one of them who helped me to go through it. He right. said, come on, listen to me, girl. Mm -hmm. We don't need a breast. You don't want, you, you're not going to have another child. Are you going to have a child? I said, well, no. He said, well, you don't need a breast. So go ahead, do what nice. you have to do. So, you know. I know we're fast in your business, <laughs> but like, what does this do now in terms of intimate relationships? Because for our man, is, I'm a breast man, right? Yeah. <laughs> what does this do for the intimate relationship when there are no breasts or there is one breast? What does it do for that? <laughs> I, I let you. Marie answer I mean, that one. I don't see. It, it, it might affect it for a moment or two, but life goes on. I, read, I, I think life goes well, on. Well, the time I had a partner who mm -hmm. was understanding. And him just tease me and say, come on, honey, and him oh. come on, him rub it on him, you know? Yeah. It was, like, how dare you want you to even like, you feel, like you know, and feel sad. sad Don't be selfish. Anything. This yeah. is something right, potentially life-threatening, and you're going right. to complain about not having a breast. Come on. And the thing is, this, what he did, he made sure he took, I have two sons, mm -hmm. he took them, and he talked to them, and he, you know? Explain. So, right, they knew everything, doing surgery and everything. They were there. My smaller son, when I went home, because I took, went home with the draining mm -hmm. uh -huh, and he comes every morning, he opens, mm -hmm. drain it, 
measure it, so the wrote family it down. was very much a part of the My process. family, it, it has to be, it has to be. Yeah. And anybody who thinks they can go through this alone is crazy. Absolutely. Because, you know, there's still a lot of stigma attached to cancer. So some people don't want to tell people that mm -hmm. they have this when they contract. It's not your fault. It's oh. nothing that you've done, you know. So you just have to let people in. <coughs> let them come and look after you. Please. And I had a strong network. And I, I thank God for that because I could not have got through without my, without my family, family, my friends. And even some people who weren't their very close friends proved to be real angels you yeah, know right. came to look for the hospital brought fruits for you came to sleep i had people sleeping over with me for example on yeah. chemo weekends because you need somebody around to help you mm. especially at those crucial times so there's a what do you say yeah, to gone. somebody now who maybe would have just received a diagnosis that they they might have breast cancer get treatment as quickly as possible mm -hmm and take the best possible care of yourself. Allow people to look after you as well. And it's not a life-threatening. You, you might not it, have to get it. It is life-threatening if you don't deal with it quickly. Mm -hmm. Right, what I tell him that, listen, breast cancer is just like if you're diagnosed with diabetes or high blood pressure. You just have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You just have to just Attack it, it's attack it, so you just attack it back. One of the <laughs> things, yeah. Attack, attack it. Attack back, I like that. Attack it back. I attack it back. One yeah. thing that I absolutely love looking on mm -hmm. is the way that survivors support each other. Right. Yes. I yes. think it's been amazing for me to take a look at the Jamaican Cancer Society and other organizations life, like that. Things. And just when you ladies get together and you share stories mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. share laughter, a lot of times when you think about cancer, it's the doom and the gloom and exactly. the sorrow. Yeah. And it's so amazing to see survivors get yeah. together and laugh. Yeah. Unlike Marie, I had no experience because there's nobody in my family who's had this. Mm -hmm. So this was completely new territory yeah. for me. And um, the last thing the world I expected to hear was that. Plus, I'm somebody who's very much into health and fitness and this and that and try to eat right. And I said, mm -hmm. where is this coming from? Yeah. You know, not expecting it. But once you get over the ball in the initial shock and the rest of it, you just have to pull yourself up and get, you know, go and deal right. with it. So All four right. years in remission. I know. <laughs> four years in remission for you both. Yes. Um, yes. Usually they say when you get to the fifth year is when you can breathe that big sigh of relief. Yes. Yes. No yes. more. How are you going to celebrate? I think I'm having a party next year. <laughs> <laughs> a pink party. Let's just yeah. have a pink party. <laughs> what about yourself? Well, I'm not sure I'm going to celebrate, but I don't think five years. I think I'm, I think I'm cancer free She's now. She's celebrating oh, already. I'm celebrating, celebrating because, because oh, yeah. you know, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Listen, when I, I did the conventional treatment, mm -hmm. and after that I heard about a naturopath, and I went ahead and I did it. And... To be frank, I can't remember one day that I, I, I'm, I was sick. Mm. I've worked. I don't stop for sick leave or anything. I just go through. I just And you seem to have a strong frame of mind. So ladies, thank you so right. much, ladies. You are, you are survivors. Love it. And ladies at home, seal up your breasts. As Dr. Abrams <laughs> would have said, touch yourselves and get tested, tested. all right? So... We're going to go over now to Proto JAA. He's here to kick things started. Yeah, we ready with Proto J? And he's a Proto J, A. Chronics are where you say, A. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? And I just go where the trade wind blows. I'm sending love to my friends and foes. And I suppose that I'm pleased to be chilling in the West Indies. And I provide all my wants and needs. I got the sunshine, rivers, and trees. 